What's up, Kansas City? This is your host, Rosina Juwani, and I have the pleasure here today to welcome Ms. Charlotte O'Neill joining us today and fondly referred to as Mama C, Mama Charlotte. Thank you so much, Mama C, for joining us today. And thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to talk to Kansas City. Now, Mama C has been here today at the Bruce R. Watkins Center, and you were talking about a few projects that you have underway. Would you like to tell our viewers what you've been working on? Yes, in addition to my poetry book, Warrior Woman of Peace, I'm working on Life Slices, which is uh, another poetry book. It's actually finished, I just got to publish it. And I'm also working on Parallel Lives, which is my autobiography. Your autobiography, yes. which I would love to touch on in more detail. But you are a performance artist mm -hmm. and a poet, yes. and you have a vast collection of works that you've um, done over the years. Mm -hmm. And you're coming to the U.S. after how many years? Oh, well, I was gone. I was in Tanzania. I was in Africa for 20 years before I first came back in 1990. But since then, since 1995, I've been coming almost every year, every other year, for the Heal the Community Tour. And you forgot to say I'm a visual artist. Also. Oh, visual artist, yes. of course, of course. I'm a, film, I'm a filmmaker also. Oh, wow. So I try to do it, I'm an actor, I try to do it all, but I waited too long to learn to be a dancer. Well, Unless you know, it's, it's never step. too late. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us a little bit about your new book of poetry that's coming out. What's yes. inspired you? What are some of the themes that you talk about? It, it's amazing how just about anything can inspire me, but you know, I love to write about love. I love to write about community. I love to educate through my work. That's, you know, as an artist, I think it's our responsibility to uplift our communities through our work. You know, I've never been an artist who, whose philosophy is art for art's sake. You know, and so that's why I don't really delve into abstract art as far as my visual art. I think it should be a teaching tool. You know, and that's what I do, whether it's my music or by my visual art or my poetry. It should be a teaching tool of some kind. Wonderful. Now, there was one poem that I came across, The Red Cockatoo Feathers, yes. which you gave a performance on. It was sort of a spoken word piece. Yes. Tell us a little bit more about that. In that poem, mm -hmm. you touch on some very, very serious subject matter. It's very, very true. I wrote that poem while I was on tour, the Poetry Africa Tour. I was one of seven artists who was selected to be a part of this poetry tour. Uh, we went to Zimbabwe, we went to Malawi, we went to Cape Town and Durban. One of the other poets, uh, besides Muta Baruka, who's a very, very famous poet, was uh, a professor from Malawi who's in exile and teaching in Illinois. And he also has a publishing house. He challenged us. He said that he was writing his first anthology of African erotica. He said this has never been done. So he challenged we poets to write some erotica. I took up the challenge even though I'd never done this before. <laughs> But in the writing of this, and I think I finished it while we were in Malawi, and it was like it wrote itself. In the writing of this, it became so much more than erotica. Hmm? It touched on subjects like uh, the right to die, the right to end your own life, for instance, if you're in pain and suffering. It touched on the issue of medical marijuana, which I think is has, has helped so many people through painful episodes in their life. It touched on the issue of self-pleasuring, which is something that I speak a lot on in Africa because I think that if people didn't have such a guilty perception of self-pleasuring, it could save their lives. They wouldn't go out seeking a, a, a partner and perhaps expose themselves to HIV AIDS and mm -hmm. other um, uh, diseases like that, you know. So it, it touched on so many issues that are dear to my heart. And I read that the, the performance you're talking about took place uh, at the um, University of KwaZulu Natal in Durban mm -hmm. during the Poetry Africa uh, Festival. Okay. Yes, and I actually got a standing ovation when I read that. Little did I know 
that there were around 50 secondary school children and their parents in the audience when I was getting ready to read this poem, but then I said, it's nothing dirty about this. No. You know, this is again a tool to educate the community about all these things. So I got up there, sister, and it was beautifully received, and I've, I've uh, shared that poem many times since. That's wonderful. It was truly, you know, an experience watching it, and I think that it's very brave of you to, you know, considering the audience that you had, mm -hmm. to still go ahead. Yes. It's a taboo subject, but yes. it needs to be addressed. Yes. It needs to be talked about. And of course, the form in which you're doing it is so wonderful. Thank you. Now, you also have a biography coming out, mm -hmm. and it's something you've written? The autobiography? Auto autobiography, yes. yes. That's okay. the one, Parallel Lives. Parallel Lives, and that chronicles your it, the parallel lives are my life and my husband, Pete O'Neill's life, and he's 11 years older than me, and we actually think we saw each other when I was a very young teenager. Mm -hmm. I like to think that that was him. <laughs> so it's going to chronicle, and it's going to have a, a timeline that's going to be run parallel. The things that were happening in his life, juxtaposition with the things that were happening in my life, on up to what we're doing today mm -hmm. in uh, Tanzania, in, in East Africa. And We've been married for 44 years. That's amazing. You know? Congratulations. Thank you. I feel so blessed. Yes. yes. Now, you do have a couple of organizations that you and your husband have both started mm -hmm. in East Africa. And one of them is the UAACC? Yes, that stands for mm -hmm. United African Alliance Community Center. Community Center. And now that particular organization, you work with a lot of, um, I guess just involving the community mm -hmm. in the arts. Yes. And there's a radio station that's also involved in that. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a bit more about that? The the radio station, we're no longer on air. Okay. Uh -huh. We're making a transition into, uh, uh, to stream it over the internet because we see we'll be able to uh, reach many more people. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, at UAACC, we have daily classes for youth and adults. Uh, some of the subjects are English, computer classes. We bought the first internet to our village. We live in the village. Wow. Huh? Uh, all the arts, because we, uh, we have a recording studio. We do filmmaking and film editing mm -hmm. there. We understand the empowerment that comes from a young person or anybody being able to explore their creativity and to stand tall and walk as an artist. So we emphasize all of the arts. We also have the Leaders of Tomorrow Children's Home. I know. Yes. It's a wonderful organization. Yes, and we're raising, uh, right now we're raising 22 children. Some of them have been with us for more than four years. Some of them are orphans, and some of them have been taken care of by some of the people in the village, but they were having a hard time doing it, you mm -hmm. know. And so uh, we're doing that, and, the, and we, in addition to the children going to school every day, we have tutors for them also when they come back from the village school, and all of them are doing excellent. Some of them are number one in their classes. One of the girls, the oldest girl, was number one out of three schools. So it's hard work. It can be stressful sometimes, but it is oh so worth it. Well, it sounds like you guys are doing wonderful work because sometimes taking care of a child is not enough. You have to nurture them and give them opportunities, yes. which your program is doing so beautifully. And you have a cultural exchange program. Yes. Is that still? It's still life? going. Well, we first started this uh, Hill Community Cultural Exchange with De La Salle Education mm -hmm. Center. We did that for several years. Now we're continuing with many other youth, and we also host uh, study abroad groups. Study abroad groups that come from not only all over the United States, but other countries as well. And you know, we feel like for, for a student who have never been out of their community to be immersed into a different culture, to be able to, to be daily with youth who are realizing their dreams, you know, it sparks something in them. You know, and and, they, and it changes their lives. We see this all the time. We've even had gang members who come there and who have been thoroughly transformed. You know, I think that's, it's beautiful. That is beautiful. Yes. Now, for our viewers out there, you coming from, you know, Tanzania, living there for so many years, East Africa, 
you have a different perspective than a lot of the African American community here. What words of wisdom, pearls of wisdom, can you give to aspiring artists like yourself? You know, you're established that they may not be able to get from you someone know, here. Find your own voice and make sure that any kind of art that you do, whether it's music or dance or poetry or filmmaking, photography, whatever, make sure that it educates the community, you know? That's the paramount uh, purpose of art. And I think that it is our duty to pass it on, to, to mentor other artists, and to stand up and represent all the time. Thank you very much, Mama C, for spending the afternoon with us here today. We thank want to you. thank you. Thank you. So Wish you luck on all your future endeavors. Thank you. There is a documentary coming out. Yes. KBS documentary chronicling the lives of you and your husband. Yes. I want to encourage our viewers to check that out and also to keep um, abreast of what Mama C's got going on. We'll keep you updated on our website, whatsupkansascity.net, and make sure to check out Cascade Cascadesportstv.tv. This is your host, Rosina Jawani. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Hello, this is Sydney. And this is your girl, Aisha. Check out Diana's hair care and styling where beauty is a habit and you should try it. Fellas, y'all paying $20 and $15 to get a haircut. Diana, she has a $10 haircut special. Y'all can get fresh and all that. Right. Let's take a quick look at our shop. She also has a manicurist on call, so for professional quality service and work, please call her at 816-444-1611. Location 751 East 63rd Street, Suite 100. Let them know the twins sent you.